So now, finally on BBB Radio, let's talk about Batman Robin, right? Yeah. So previously, our, yeah, it's our shame we couldn't get him because we did, we did, um, yeah, Batman we did, we did too. Batman Forever. We we had a large Sorry, yeah, you know, Forever, yeah. cast pretty much yeah. to talk about it, but you know, it's just us riding solo on this one, right? Which is fine, right? Um, but yeah, as I said, as I was about to say previously on this podcast, here yeah, we talked about Batman Forever. You know, we celebrated the twenty fifth anniversary of that. You know, we, um, you know, and it was just fun. You know, looking back at that movie and even much more fun talking about it. Like honestly, that is that is one of the episodes that I absolutely love. I yeah. always go back to it. You know, what I mean, I just always love your perspective where you see how. Uh, you know, having two pieces of dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, right. But it was it was a blast, character. right? Yeah, yeah. We and we did mention Batman Robin as well too. But at the at the time, I wasn't sure if I would ever reach this point to talk about uh, about it proper, right? But see that this movie is turning twenty five this year. We kind of might as well, right? So, uh, just let you know what time this. Uh, we we. I'm not even gonna bother to to run through the plot itself. I'll just mention moments, but that plot, right? Uh, reason being is because just to sit down and watch this and analyze it and take right. notes would take a whole day. And really, I right. don't have time for that, right? So I just literally watch it after watching uh, the, the previous show that we talked about that was, um, you know, uh, The Fifth Element. And I was just like, okay, I should make, I should mention, I should bring this up in the in review here. I should bring this up. I'll just make, I'll just write the points, right? So... But always say, Tyler, just just by retrospective look. Well, sorry, or I should say, what I first saw this film, right? So, nineteen ninety seven, pretty interesting year for film, boys. So, I I really enjoyed Batman Forever, right? I was I was on the hype train for that at a young age, yeah. right? Yeah. But when this movie came out, I was like, all right, hell, Z, I need to see this, right? And I'll never forget, right? And I had a similar experience in the same year with a little movie called Mortal Kombat Annihilation, yeah. Where and this was like my my. My 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 film criticism brain, my my cinephilic brain just kind of formed in itself, right? But I'll never forget where I just sat, uh, where I just sat down, and watched this film, and I was just silent through all of this. Yeah, nothing connected with me. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any thrill. I didn't laugh. I just sat there silently. I was just there in the cinema by myself. I just oh, kind really? of thought of it like. You was in wow. myself for this? How old you was? Yeah. Uh, no, well, I, I don't know what happened. I, 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 well, you know, well, well sorry, my, my siblings and my, my dad, my, my mom, you know, who, you know, uh, she she never was into cinema at all. But yeah, my dad wouldn't care to watch this and my siblings didn't care either. So I went by myself. And I just kind of came out of it like, wow, okay. that was... I, I, could, was I, only, I only started going, okay, I only started going to movies by myself for the first time in like 19 or something like that. Like, okay, that weird. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a matinee show. So it was just yeah. kind of easy for me to just go see it come out, get a taxi come out, right? It was in right. Windsor, right? Where you went to yeah, the Yeah, Windsor, right? yeah, yeah. Windsor, yeah. you could just go in, in and out, yeah. Yeah, but even even back then, Dred, I was telling myself, wait, 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 wait. Something not right with this movie. And I just kept thinking about it while I was watching this. Something not right. Something not right. This not wicked. This not wicked. This not wicked. This not wicked. And it's over the years what I really thought about, like when I watched the TV, and I just see it play out again. It's like, all right, all right, all right. And this is before I I got the internet and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's like, okay, yeah, this 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 movie is 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 terrible, right? And it's only like afterwards, like in the two thousands, when you know you you're looking at movies and best and worst movies. Yeah, this this would show up there, man, uh, as one of the worst, right? And admittedly, it is one of the worst, right? Um, but you know. Like in retrospect, right? That you know, a lot of people like to throw the blame on Joel Schumacher, right? Which is unfortunate. By the way, rest in peace to Joel Schumacher, right? It's funny that you know, like literally right after we talked about Batman Forever, about a week or so afterwards, that's when he passed away, right? So look at that, right? But yeah, uh, you know, we 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 love to throw the blame on him. It's like, oh, you you just made Batman just so campy and. Oh, it's like sixties Batman, and you know it's so over the top and just crazy and wild and all that kind of stuff. Though. But for me, and I guess we could t- kind of ha- um, touch on it, you know, while we while we touch on you know moments in the film. I think it's the studio. I think it's Warner just seeing here's what Batman Forever was a huge success, and rightfully so. See as well, let me just pump just pump a shit ton of money into this movie. And let me just go big, larger life trend. And as we've learned, that this is like a pure example of this trend. Bigger does not equate to better trend. This is like a prime example of what happens when you think, oh, we just must we must make things bigger and larger in life. And the story just falls completely flat, trend, you know? 
But and I'll bring this up at the very end too. You know, this is still a film like now today. You can watch and laugh and you know do right. a roast on and all that kind of stuff. It's designed like that. So I do like the fact that it yeah, isn't completely it, like for buried, me, you know, because yeah, oh, it's yeah, so terrible, you know. Yeah, for me, for me, because it was clearly like playing playing on on you know the Adam West stuff. Um, I that's why I don't bother me as much in retrospect. Like it's clearly that type of that is what they're going for. It's not dark yeah, Batman. I, I I, I understand, right? But but just yeah. before before we get to your your retrospect, look at it, right? But still, because I don't know, I know a lot of people don't really care about Batman Fever. The some people find it's just you know appeal continuation of Batman Returns, right? But I love Batman Returns. I love it. It's still my favorite Batman movie of the nineties, in my opinion, right? If right. if 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 I had to pick out of a hat, right? But I did still enjoy Batman Fever, and yes, even though it was leaning towards more flashy, theatrical campiness and whatnot, there was still that brooding darkness that was underneath there. So it, it's right. almost like he, we didn't completely a, abandon the, the, the brooding dark vibe of the previous two films, no, but yeah, right? In, in Batman Forever, he still had an arc. Like a yes, him, yes, yes, yes. There, there was still a... a yeah, um, right. yes. Yeah, him it's still the Batman and, the, and Bruce Wayne characters. There was still exactly. an arc involved, right? But yeah. this one, like, just... It, like, you know, all right, there was there was some dark stuff here and there, but it just felt like it just threw away the gut stuff. Like, it threw away that. Yeah. And instead, we just go in for this sort of over-the-top kind of garish sort of larger life stuff. And, you know, it's all, you know, like, it's 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 taking the campiness of the previous film and just amping it up by five, right? That That's yeah. what he does here. And, you know, it's just that the story surrounding it was just was just weak, you know what I mean? There's, there's a yeah. few things about it I do like, which I'll bring up in my review. But everything else just fell completely flat. Boy, my God, last thing I'll say, my God, boy, the cast involved in this, boy. I mean, from from George Clooney all the way down to, to Arnold Schwarzenegger, boy, my God. Yeah. Like, their careers were almost ruined because of this, right? And I think that, well, that, that, one, that's I, one I think, I think the only one we, person... Why we don't really like this film so much, though. Yeah, you know? the, it's the just only, the wasted talent, you know? Yeah, the only one person, I think, really career was hurt by this was Chris O'Donnell. Um, yeah, was like, because, was he in any other film after this? Yeah, no, but that's the problem. The mistake he made was, dude, you can't do two Batman as, a, as the same Robin. I mean, come on, like, enough. That, that's like, true. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you had already worse age on the Like, bro, you should have dropped out from since the first one, though. Uh, yeah, well, look at what Val did. He dropped out yeah. after Batman yeah. Forever, right? Just yeah, saying. Like, yeah. But, yeah, but, but Ricardo, your, 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 your quick history with, yeah, with Batman Robin, so, so especially when you like, felt I don't know. Again, I'll admit that if I was on the internet at the time, I'd probably be heating on this more. But, like, no, it, it, it's, it's one of those films that just Nick clearly was trying to make it fun and, and trying to go the whole garish over the top aesthetic um it's very camp it's very theater it's very like that's what they're going for clearly and i couldn't really like hate this as much as other people seem to in retrospect yes there was a lot of dumb bullshit in it like like bad credit card and nonsense like that but um to me everybody was just playing it up like that is what it's supposed to be and uh, if if to me once you look at it in the framework of it's meant to be adam west you like it not that bad in retrospect not super like oh is this but it's still a pretty bad film all things considered um and it's the weakest of the batman films pong for pong in my opinion um but yeah uh yeah, that's yeah so not, not, not else to talk about pussy like we could get into um the hate for the director and all of that stuff but like they just the internet being edgelord bullshit back in the late 90s and early 2000s so. and that's true that's true yeah. right just yeah making but, but, more but noise, making more noise and they should over the hate for something though. I don't know. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But but um yeah, I mean there there are still things in this movie. Like even when I look at it now, um just just doesn't work at all. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh case in point, you know, the 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 just the first few shots that you see this, right? You know, the costuming scene, right? Basically, yeah. um the emphasis on man ass. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> and like why too. why did the the the, the stuntman, whoever it is, because I doubt it was George Clooney. I thought it was Chris well, O'Donnell I mean, being shot like that. It could be right. by doubt, right? Yeah. Why they had to hop. The, you know? the, the second they turn, right? Yeah, like, yeah, why? I, I, I don't understand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You gotta see how bulging your know, face bumps and like, all right, well, you, you know, you can chill, <laughs> you can chill out. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but you know, the, you know, for better or for worse, there's some memorable lines in this movie, boy. That's the opening lines in this movie alone, though. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. Yeah, go in retrospect, in retrospect, right? 
I know this was to get, you know, pre-release the Snyder Cut fanboys to kind of jizz them. So I was like, oh my God, they mentioned Superman. That means we're going to get Superman in the next right. movie. Yeah, <gasps> not, yeah. But still, it's a terrible ass line. Yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't work. I don't know. It's supposed to be a reference to the to the to Batman Forever with the chick sing the car thing. You know, yeah. that's the convo between Batman and Chase Marinian, right? But oh gosh, this is why Superman works a little bit, especially the dry delivery from yeah. from uh, from George Clooney. Clooney. Yeah, the... Clooney. It's such a weird call by Clooney, like why he was chosen for this and what the kind of decisions he made. Because at the time he like when he was picked for this, I was like, all right, you could kind of I could see that working as Bruce Wayne. Like, I can remember hearing it on the radio. Yeah, George yeah, Clooney, yeah. gonna be blah blah blah. I'm like, all right. Yeah, but, but even back then, it was kind of weird that okay, well, you know, we had Michael Keaton for two films. Right. We had Val, who I thought was pretty convincing. You, I, I, I still see he's a great right. Bruce Wayne, right? He got, yeah. he get yeah. that duality, that darkness yeah, about him. Exactly, he nailed that, right? Um, yeah. but because he wanted to work at the scene, I don't blame him. He's like, right. I, I, I can't do this though. But right. still, you know, like it's it's like the tail end of the nineties. Like you're telling right. me, Warner couldn't and just Clooney, wait one year. I forget, I forget how one long. year and, 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 and cast him to, to like okay, like he could have do the scene, and then afterwards nah. he could have do Batman yeah. Robin. Like nah, they, they no. don't care. They just have to do it. They gotta, because yeah, again, the studio just want to pump out that shit as soon. Yeah, as it, it's a pipeline thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. It but but the thing is, Clo- I forget how long Clooney, Clooney was on ER at the point at this point. Like oh, um, I, I can't remember neither. I didn't yeah. used to follow the show to be honest, right? Exactly. Um, but probably was, like two three years, I guess. I right. Know. But the thing is, the thing is Clooney. Remember Clooney's career start pretty later. Eh? Like all things considered, I think it's, it, like you only really blew up in the, in his thirties, eh? which is weird. Mm. Like, that's a really unusual for actor. Yeah. And he really sell the whole older guy thing like so the idea of him being a bruce wayne wasn't the worst idea um, no no but as but, batman however <laughs> which but I'll as get batman it. absolutely yeah. terrible and then another problem is that he can't cast off shaking his head for some reason why k- case yeah. in point the <laughs> high freeze i'm batman high freeze i'm batman like yeah. he's shaking his head almost like he just kind of yeah. smiling like i know he's doing the george Cooney kind of smooth but right. the bubbly head no the wobbly head sorry just make it even more laughable uh, right uh, uh, just sorry it, it just don't work you know yeah and it but it, it's just it's just such a fascinating call that they decide to go with this as it is now um i don't know it, it that's how i just feel about it it's like well why choose him why was he chosen the why him other than yeah. well, it's just yeah right like that is it right he just had a good agent and that was the call right I don't know. Exactly, but it wasn't like no big major movies that he was in that was like, right. all right, cool. Exactly. George Clooney need to be in this. Yeah. Val was, was signing a number of big movies, exactly. right? Val was already and big. That's right. why they cast exactly. him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, speaking of where casting, boy, you had to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger, boy, as right. Mr. Freeze, right? Again, now, now, I'll confess something, right? Choice. Yeah, I'll confess something, right? Um, Never was a big fan of the Mr. Freeze character, right? I always right. dug the tragic nature of the of his of his character, right? You know, yeah, with so, his wife, so the animated series, all that stuff, right? Yeah, the, but the, the animated, animated series in particular was when right. I was like, all right, I I do like him as a character. I do like yeah. the whole Iceman thing, but I just yeah. never saw him as oh right. my god, this is the villain that I love, and I would love to see him on screen. Exactly. That's the thing. Well, yeah. that's the thing. The, the animated series, the animated series, pretty much reinvented the character because that that whole oh, tragic, okay, okay. that whole tragic backstory stuff and thing that just that was new. That they did. Oh, I, they I almost invented that. that. Yeah, I think I think pretty much Bruce Tim and them just pretty much invented that for that show. Um, but somebody could correct me on that because I don't I don't think that was in the comic or even uh, well the six six show was was where that character comes from. I think, but I, I don't think. Really? That was, okay, I, I thought think, that, I think that was, he he probably came back in the eighties, like you know, around, no, around the Frank Miller so. era or something. Again, somebody on the internet could correct me on this, but I have no working memory of him. I think they more or less invented that for the show. Um. But I don't know exactly, exactly. But sure. But that's how I, I, I'll have a working memory for that. So when that was the template for the character from here on in. It's like, okay, he's this tragic backstory, this, ac- this accident that happens to him, blah, blah, blah. And then he gets this heart of ice and you have this cold persona and icy cell. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, I thought, was such a bizarre call for this because, like, look, I like Arnold, but, like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I understand his, his body type. So, okay, you would have this big suit on him, but yeah, still, but, look at the but character in the, in the animated series. He was yeah. slender, so yeah, exactly. why that cast? Well, case in point, I think in real life they, they considered Patrick Stewart, you know, to be the role. Cast Maybe. someone like that, someone who's Maybe. a lot yeah, older. That that, probably work. Right, that you know, probably that, work. That, yeah. not, a, not a muscle-bound action hero to play free. Right. And, and makes some sense. Patrick Stewart, because, okay, what Patrick Stewart was doing at the time, because Star Trek Next Generation ended, but, yeah, and, and, but the movies yeah. were still going on. I think mm-hmm. the movies came out. Uh, yeah. Now, you'd probably be filming Star Trek 
Yeah, I, I think probably was probably filming Insurrection or something. Which, by the way, I did see in theaters. That was that was actually my first Star Trek movie I saw in theaters. Okay. Okay. I know, shame, shame on me, right? But yeah, that was right, my yeah. first. Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just such a bizarre call because it's just again, it was just Joel Schumacher just wanted people to ham it up on set. That is the only explanation. Like, look, that it, it funny that Arnold Schwarzenegger playing this role, kinda. And it's supposed K- to be kinda, a, yeah. And it's supposed to be a joke, and then for some reason Halle Berry in the background and like, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, no, 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 Vivica, Vivica sorry, Fox, Vivica Fox, Vivica Fox. Sorry, Fox. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Again, my, my, a, a, a year no. after she was in Independence yeah. Day, which is funny to me. Right, I, don't again, know, I find that funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I mix up my hot, my hot nineties black women, right? So I, 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 I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh yeah, uh it's just such a bizarre culture, like how stuff just like why it was casted like this and. Again, well, we could get into the script itself. Yeah, well, well, yeah, just, just, just like I I'll just mention dialogue, right, going forward, yeah. right. But yeah, um, dog, like, what makes this character so infamous? Why is these ice puns, these ice, ice puns, related puns, right? Ice like puns. the very first one, he drops his first line is the Ice Man cometh. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and he just keeps going, going, going. I mean, it's not like every single line is an ice pun. No, don't get me wrong. It's not like that, right? But when he drops them, boy, a majority of them fall flat. A few of them are, are actually like really smart, though. You know what I mean? But most of them really fall flat, right? There's one in particular that I had to write down, boy, because there's so much more to pick from, right? None of this week, he says. Cause yeah, I have a few of them that makes no sense, right? Where he says, In this universe, there's only one absolute everything freezes like what well, it says yeah it's supposed to be the heat like, really i understand dead. from a scientific perspective but why would you stop everything to drop a line like that bro? Like, like you yeah. it's almost like okay ice is like the be all end all of everything so right. everything must be about like you're associated ice with the apocalypse or ice with you you know with the ice age so to speak right and it's funny that i bring up that because yeah we get the the infamous what killed the dinosaurs yeah, it's yeah, just like, what? Why? 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 <laughs> but it's so funny, though, right? And speaking of that, right? Um, the, the opening action sequence alone, by for me, you could just see the budget for this money, uh, for this for this film, by the way, which, by the way, is within the 125 to 150, 160, sorry, million bracket, right? You could just see that money burning up with every second that passes here, boy. Set just, design, it, it, though, it's is just, just a, so... basically a big, a big theater set on a big ice, what do you call ice capades? Yeah, ice it is like it. a big ice capades kind of thing, though. It's, yeah. it's just the lighting, the sets, the props. Probably. It's just it's just excessive, though, you know what I mean? It's just overkill. And that's just and it, in the it beginning have, of it the have, movie, It has so many silly moments, which is like with them just pulling all the skates. The, the ice skates, they just, they just yeah, clap on the feet twice. And then yeah, they get yeah. ice skates. Like they just came prepared for this, right? All of yeah. a sudden, because they hear right. Mr. Freeze is involved, right? So they have they have ice skates in the booth, right? Because because fuck you, right? That's why, right? Um, the moment where where uh where where Mr. Freeze escapes in this in this sort of like ship spaceship thing, yeah. that that for the life of me, even when I saw it the full side, confused me, you know, because you know, like f- again, I was just watching this show silently, yeah, but in my head, I like. You're just kind of watching imagery and none of it making any sense. None of it flowing well, right? So in this film, like in the opening sequence alone, you just see this guy jump into this kind of spaceship thing, this rocket, sorry, fly off, right? And then he set it to blow up. He jumps out now and he have right. not, not parachute, this like butterfly a, kind of device thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Right? Uh, but is the moment though where, um, like, I think it's the doors themselves, right? So right after the, the rocket blows up, you seen Batman Robin on the doors surfing on it like air surfing. Now to be now to be fair, right? This was in the trailer, so I saw it. But I didn't really think about it that much. But when you see it play out, it makes no sense, right? And the sun is the nineties. We had point break in ninety one. Right. Like, I think that was the movie that introduced <laughs> air surfing for the first time, right? So like, okay, well, we have to do this, right? But my God, why this is a moment, right? We're seeing Robin on his board, that's what you'll call it, right? And sliding down the roof of this building, right, before trailing off again. And it's one of those moments where this cringe, like, as, as we're like, okay, I don't want to hear it, but then he says it. Cowabunga! Yeah, of course. Like, fuck yeah. all your dreams. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I hate that. I hate that. Because, dude, I know, I know Ninja Turtles was a thing, Jim, but yeah. this was, this was like uh, roughly four or five years after we got Ninja Turtles 3. 
Right. Any remember, just, anybody remember which, Ninja Turtles three? Yeah, nobody a does. <laughs> yeah, a disaster. <laughs> that was a disaster. And mm. yes, I went to cinema to see it. I went, I went to cinema to see that too. Yeah. Terrible. And I came out of it like, why? What, what was this? Right. <laughs> but oh gosh, man, to have a DC character see this. Like, I'm not going to get all comic book nudity about it, but this time a DC character, this will have Robin see this in a Batman movie that we're supposed to take seriously, even though the movie is supposed to be having fun or whatnot. See, Cowabunga, I don't know. It just pisses me off, though. Um, and speaking of Robin, though, I was, even in the trailers, right? Like, you know, it's one of those things you see in the trailer, you're kind of like, okay, that happens. But when you see it, play off for yourself, it, you make, you're laughing at it. And then the more you watch it, you laugh too. Uh, the moment where he jumps and then Mr. Freeze freezes him, there's that shot a little bit of him, like, just encasing ice is hilarious to me. <laughs> but I love, like, when he's he's torn out now. Uh, like, well, Batman tours him out now. And basically, well, be, before he does that, but <laughs> Mr. Freeze says he has 11 minutes to tour him out, right? Take, take, take a note of that, right? So after he put, he told him about, I love what he says. Do we get it? And so right. he says this kind of squeaky voice though. It's hilarious though, right? Yeah. So the 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 madness doesn't even stop there, Trev, because right afterwards we introduced the Pamela Isley boy, played by Uma Thurman, right? Now I'll confess something, right? Again, I did not, not see a... Gattaca prior to this, right? right? I saw Gattaca after the fact, right? Yeah. So this was my first introduction to Uma Thurman. I love Uma Thurman. Um, right. killed so I, for, I, was, two, I, I was familiar with, I was familiar with Pulp Fiction, but no. I didn't, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, right, Pulp Fiction. I didn't see Pulp. Uh, oh, and by the way, fun fact, folks, Pulp Fiction actually w- um, didn't show in, in, in Trinidad. I think it was banned. Right, I'm so sure I, why. okay. Here's, here's what happened. I was <laughs> familiar with Pulp Fiction because my mom was familiar with it. She saw it when she was in Holland. And oh, okay. We're, that's we're, why I knew the movie, and she got it. Like, somebody brought it for her because she loved the movie so much now. Um, oh, no, on VHS, All right? Right. So that was whole... I, I had to wait till come on, come chopped up and sent so on VH1 to see it for myself. Right. Right. So that, that's pretty much why I was familiar with it. I was like, oh yeah, right, the same trick from Pulp Fiction. Yeah, cool. Uh, that's all I knew about it. So that's about it. Yeah, yeah. but but for <laughs> me, this was my introduction to her. And afterwards, I would see you know Pulp Fiction, Kill Bills, and of course Gattaca. Right, great film by the way. Um, it, it, it's so funny seeing uh John Glover in this too, aka Lionel Luther. Like every time yeah, I yeah. see him in this movie, I just think, yeah, use Lionel Luther in small village. Right? Like like yeah. wow, like wow. <laughs> yeah, that was nice all... It's kind of like a netto tool in in Smallville as well. She was in Superman. You know that. Yes, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. That's right. Yeah, it's a nice um, Yeah, great. And, and even like just the establishing <laughs> shot of the police, because it's uh Doctor, uh, his he, he's he's playing Doctor Rude, uh, Woodrow, right? I invented character for him, right? But okay. it's that whole island of Doctor Moreau, some right. evil laboratory. You hear spooky music. You see it lightning. You see a lightning bolt. I like dog. Just dial it back, Jed. All right, I know evil looms inside here, but my God, don't 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 telegraph it to it like this, man. Come on, like I watch it, I watch it, ninety two, the ones Frank inside the sound, like tell it back there. Uh, the one thing I was weird about this is that okay, so I forget where Bean was in all of this. Like, where was he? I thought he was like part of the experiment. Oh well, 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 Bean, Bean, as as we learned, right? Well, Woodrow is 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 doing this experiment, right? And he has like these, you know, is he typical? Oh, I have these rich people, so let me show you my experiment. And you know, uh, this is the this is how much I'm gonna sell it for. And he was how meant much, to be a super you know, or something like that, right? That's what it is. That's what it is. And it's so funny you watch it now. So he 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 invented super soldier serum. That's what he called it, huh? Super right. soldier serum, <laughs> which he calls Phenom. Exactly. It's one of those things where it's like, all right, so clearly somebody was reading a lot of Marvel comics. It's like, like, all right, let me, let me just try to shoot one of the Marvel. As we understand it, you know, like I say, no, you know. Yeah. Like, I get it. But like, it's whatever. just so on the news. You're like, oh gosh, yes, you were reading Marvel comics. We get it. Okay, but oh gosh, call it something else. No, that yeah, super nah, soldier serum and Venom. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, but, well, Venom, um, is, Venom is what it's called. It's, it's what, what Bean has in the comics anyway. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. Well, right. but the, the super soldier serum is what true me is is what still true me off to. Okay. Um, here's the thing, right? Just get back to Uma Thurman. Love her as an actress, boy, but my god, like even before be- she becomes poison ivy, her lines, boy. What one thing, right? Also, is for me, she is like one of the one like okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney aside, though, 
she is the one who I feel comes out of this the worst, you know, boy, because yeah, you could really. tell that she's putting her all into this job. It's one of those things, it's kind of similar to like Josh Trank and um, uh, Tom Tom Hardy in Capone, where it's like, all right, no, I want you to go over the top. I want you to be large and life threat. But, it, but it's to the point that they stretch the talent so so thinner to the point that they come out laughable and they look horrible, right? So yeah, she has delivering these lines like, I have spent my life trying to protect plants from extinction. And now you corrupt my research into some maniacal scheme for world domination. You know, it's just how she delivered. It's just so funny, Dread. And just touching on Poison Ivy for a bit. Not the biggest fan of the character. I mean, right. I, I love her look and design in actually in, in all the, um, I should say, the TV is, incarnations of, you know, the, well, the cartoons, of right? Character that you which have Which includes to, like, the update. Batman, which includes the Batman, right? But I always felt like even in this one, just like, okay, this is your backstory. You day working in some some random laboratory and Woodrow, you, you know, who, 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 who is pretty much get rejected by her, right? Just kind of push right. you down and, you know, all these chemicals and you basically get sucked into the ground, kind of, sort of a dry right, metal yeah, kind yeah. of shit. And you kind of rise back out. There's a literal earthquake that happens, dog. Swear to God. And yeah. she rises back out in costume as... No, sorry. She's not in costume. She actually have, like, this top on and something like that, right? And that's how she becomes poison ivy dread. None of that made any sense to me. That's like, yeah, like yeah. as a backstory, I felt that was a huge betrayal to the fans, right? Because I know that is far from 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 what the um the actual backstory is and by the way just this slight spoiler i didn't even i'm not even familiar with the backstory at all you know we like i, I know bits of it but i know no, okay so, thing, so but I know it's thing with the character right far character, from what we see in this movie you know she's one of those characters that you could translate reasonably well um like plot wise because of what she's capable of and then you can get into the whole like she's kind of like a slight variation on um scarecrow in the sense of well it's all plants and, and chemicals and manipulation of you know your, your your body via chemicals and whatnot, right? So, like, okay, I would actually argue that if if like somebody were to continue Matt Reeves Batman, you could totally make Poison Ivy a, a character, um, in that like as a yeah. sequel or something like that, right? And here's the ir- ironic part. But, too. but you may have to draw a bit on like the stuff that um, I think well, she's in Bat- Batwoman, I think. Um, so you may have to draw like a little influence. It does how to make a contemporary now. I feel they might have to do. No, that. no, yeah, you could you could like do updates with, with the character, but basically the character is like a, a like a, a freedom fighter, eco terrorist is person, which mm-hmm. is fine. And ironically, you can make her connected to Bane, like little stuff like that. No? Like I, I all right, watch... so she makes the Venom, which which they do in this film actually, because right. yeah, it was well, the work that created the Venom to begin with. Yes, yeah. thing too, Bane is also from South America, so you could you could play with That's that right. whole seat of. South America, ayahuasca, protecting the rainforest stuff, now, or something like that. So the character was never a character that was always detached from me as a as a as an implausibility figure. Like on like on like say something like Clayface or Scarecrow or something like that. Where you had a if you want to make it plausible, you had to do some real weird conceits with the character kind of thing. Now, um, like I always thought, you know, listen, I like Mr. Freeze, but he's a weird character. Like he's a character that's kind of hard to make difficult or realistic. I should say, you know, if that's you want to, for lack of a better term, Nolanize the character, right? Um, yeah, that, that's 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 impossible, actually. Right. Yeah, some people will argue it's virtually impossible. Right? Yeah, they really kind of stretch it now. Um, but but so with her character in this now, like it wasn't like a big stretch for me. Like, hey, I kind of get what they want they want to do or try, and it's just total camp and nonsense. Again, you know, she wanted they want I get what they would be going for is, is Batman sixty six stuff. But she just went. yeah, we want to do a little kid kind of a little kid kind of cat woman yeah, thing, you right, know, exactly. kinda, yeah. Um, but speaking of that, though, yeah, boy, uh, you know, because just when you think, you know, um, uh, Schwarzenegger having it up, boy, Tum man just goes all the way up to. Some people may argue that, yeah, she she is the most harming character in this movie, Dread, because yeah. she's doing like, you know, these these part plant puns, but she also made like, you know, all these yeah, risky yeah, dialogue yeah, exactly, and things too. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, so it wild oats and all that kind of stuff. I'll get your rocks and all that kind of stuff. It's just yeah. like. All right, like is a porn star or something like that? Like even like yeah, the way how she looks and all that too. Like 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 I sorry, like like I imagine there's some sort of like Batman porn somewhere. Yeah, and you, probably she's like one of the characters in it, right? For obvious reasons. I mean, it, yeah, it but is... it's like real harmy shit though, you know. No, it is funny for what they're trying to go for. Like I get it, though. Like, but jeez, boy, nonsense, real nonsense. It is, it is. And um, speaking of bead though, um, uh, yeah, boy, I'll, I'll just see this. I'll just see this at the time for the time being, right? 
tag, say what you want about Dark Knight Rises, right? Say what you want about it. Still my favorite movie of 2012. I know this is CBA that gave us Avengers, but I pick uh, I actually put Dark Knight Rises over it. Oh, really? Nah, I, but, I, I, I find what? Dark Knight Rises. Anyway, we'll talk about that, but I find Dark Knight Rises so underwhelming, but like, I, 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 I know, is it trequel? I know, I know, as, especially yeah. as a follow-up to, to the Dark Knight, but it, to be fair, even the even Nolan and the brother I was like, you know, we, we can't top it, you know. We could never top Dark Knight anyway, so let me just try to end the trilogy. And I right. thought that they did that very well. That's just me, right? But you have to tag them, Dread, for at least redeeming the character of being Dread. Because if this version uh, we saw here in this movie was the only <laughs> film version that we got here, but just be like, right. why should anybody care about being Dread? Like, yeah, this yeah. being here is terrible. It's just like, okay, I just gotta be like this, you know, wannabe Lou Ferrego flexible biceps. Like, like, rawr, you know what I mean? And, and that's being that is being like even even I wasn't familiar with being at all. Like actually, my introduction to being came through the anime series, series, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, he was great at that, but my yeah. god, what is this? Like even yeah. to this day, like what is this, right? You know. But yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It's a, it's a weird call. Like just having him be so mindless. And, like why? Because the, the whole point of being is that like, he's a smart dude. Like he's supposed to be really smart. And but I don't know why, why they decide to make this. It's a weird call. That's super. It weird. is. This. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but just just get back to to freeze for a bit, right? Um, all these stuff that they do with him, boy, that's his lair, and it has ice, and you know, there's the infamous scene. Let's, let's keep saying infamous, the famous scene with him telling his goose, "Come on, sing! Come on, sing! Louder! Come on, sing, sing, sing! Come on, yes! Come on, louder!" That's that was- where it's all with Kay Fox in it as well too, and she just dropping all these these ice and heat puns. No, sorry, she was dropping heat puns, and he was just kind of countering it with ice puns. You know, what I mean, right. it's like, oh, you got a cold heart. You know, what I mean all that kind of stuff. It's, it's clearly meant to be like how Drew Barrymore was, and I forget the other woman who was in Batman. Right, Femme, right, so right. You have the yes, who right. like real sexualize and ooh, you know, what I mean? what do you want to do and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, it's like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, Freezer's plan though made no goddamn sense to it. So basically, and what was his story? His plan oh. is to freeze Gotham. <laughs> Hear him about it. He wants to freeze Gotham, right? Hold it for ransom until he gets the funding he needs to continue his research to right. restore his wife's health trend. Yeah. So my thing is, right? Why why don't just like rob banks and use that money to do it, bro? <sighs> you you going through all this hassle of of of. By the way, before I forget. He's stealing diamonds because, and this is one thing that pissed me off, and still pisses me off about the movie, yeah? You're using diamonds to power your suit, bro. Yeah, that's what it's... Like, it's like, like why like, not use water or some kind of, like, you know, like, no, well, okay. some sort of so it's ice also like, it's, or something to fill it? I don't get, why I don't get, I don't get it was supposed to power the suit yeah. necessarily, but it's supposed to be, like, something like a kind well, of... Well, they say basically oh, to, to oh, power... Listen. Well, it's to power the gun, actually. I, I think that's right. what they say, to power the gun. But, like... So so why not just have something that runs throughout the suit and into the gun, bro? Like that's not how well, it is. I, I, yeah, the... I, I, I just interpret it like it's a, like a focusing crystal kind of thing. It was just a focus, something like that. I, I, it was weird. Well, uh, uh, I, I'm defending the weird science, whatever. Anyway, it makes no sense, right? Uh, also, something that I saw in the trailer back then, and then when you see it now, it still makes those. No it, it it just feels less pointless and out of place, right? <sighs> Bad Gill. Right, but, that, but that's Barbara Gordon that we know. It's Barbara yeah. Wilson and played by post clueless Alicia Silverstone, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I was not on the clueless bandwagon because I was I mean, a, I was a boy. Now that movie, that movie only come come that, that was that was for, that was for chicks. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Only, I, I didn't get when it. When I saw it in the USA, I was like, okay, that's 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 what it's it about. That, it's, it's a mildly funny, charming show. Like, oh, yeah. And it had took took from took from scrubs in it. So like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but for me, but but for me, I never I never bought into how because that was a that was a hugely popular movie, yeah. But I never understood how big it was until like I actually saw it for myself. I was like, oh okay, that's that's why that's all right. But yeah, her as Bat he was just like, all right, but you know, and here's the problem with the movie, right? So as a whole, right? I uh, it's it's the same bigger is better thing, right? Yeah. All right, Batman Fever, he's in the title, right? Batman, right? Okay, you you bring in Robin, right? But see what you want about Batman further. At least it's justified why Robin is there, and they make it work, right? You know, with him, they give him up. With, with Bruce Wayne being the father figure, basically to decrease, right? It make a lot of sense and explore the character and all that kind of stuff, right? So even though the movie is called Batman Forever and there's two villains he had to fight, they still found a place for Robin. Like he didn't feel shoehorned, he didn't feel out of place. Here, Batgirl feels way shoehorned because it's like, all right, we have two villains already. 
We have two heroes already. So but yes, it, because it, is it, is it the bigger is better thing. We have no, to bring it the plot change, hero. Why? The plot change is the problem. The plot change was the problem. Like they have a be Alfred's niece. Yeah, Alfred's niece. Alfred's niece. No, here's yeah. the thing. Now, Alfred. Alfred has a, 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 a younger family, like a niece character. But that's not Batgirl. It's, it's, I forget the character's name. But she's supposed to be like MI6 or something like that. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, she was in that um, Catwoman Woman, right, printed yeah. uh, animated right. feature we talked about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, so why? Could, I don't understand who this character is or supposed to be. But yeah, it, none of it works. I was like, yeah, but it's, it's Gordon Daughter. Like, just do the Gordon Daughter thing. What the hell? Well, I know. And Commissioner Gordon is in the movie. Not a lot. He doesn't even yeah. do shit, but he's there, yeah. right? Um. And you know the funny thing is like look at it, look at it now. She's actually the most normal character in the whole movie, you know. Well, outside yeah. of, of Alfred, right? She's the most like normal hero in the film, you know. Everybody else kind of just being happy and all that kind of stuff. She normal. There's a moment in the end where you know they 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 try to have she pre woke, and it just sounds terrible. But I'll get to that in a bit, right? Um, speaking of Alfred now, uh, he's actually like the best character in the film. Yeah, like, right. he's the most flesh out here. Is he, is he um, not the same? Is he the same actor from from all the other movies? I can't remember. Yes, yes, yes. It, 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 dude, it's right? Michael Go. Yeah, uh, right. It is the generic or oh, have a terminal illness. Uh, what well, is uh, McGregor's syndrome stage right. one? Yeah, the same, thing, same thing. Same yeah, thing. Yeah, same thing that Miss uh, yeah. Miss Freeze have right. It's it's that right. But I actually, for like the moment where it's basically him opening up a little bit more to 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 Bruce. Uh, Bruce kind of understanding how he kind of sees you will. Uh, just those those back and forth there, uh, and you see just how much of a father figure Alfred was to him. Yeah, those moments actually work. Like they really do work. Like I would say, yeah, hands down, he is the best character in the film, right? Although I just find it's just kind of generic that oh, you know, we have, you know, we we, we couldn't really think of anything to give Alfred. So yeah, let me just have him like be close to that, you know. Just make him sick, yeah. Yeah, let's just make him that, right? But I wonder though, you know, because we were supposed this was supposed to be a trilogy, right? And the oh, it's supposed the, to be a trilogy. The, 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 this this thing here, this was supposed to be second part, the third film. Oh, really? Actually, yeah, this was supposed to be a trilogy, yeah. The, the third film was supposed to be called Batman Unchained. Okay. I, I will just leave it at that. Batman Unchained, right? But it's because of the failure, the financial and critical failure of this movie get, here. That's right. why they just scrap everything. That's right. why it stopped. Okay. Yeah, this was supposed to be a trilogy. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, it was, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. So that, that potential fifth film was supposed to be... I remember hearing on the radio that it was supposed to be John Travolta and Madonna. Was was supposed to be what the villains? Yes, yeah, Scarecrow and and, and uh, Harley Quinn. I would have loved to see my daughter's Harley Quinn doing retrospective. I feel that was like a, a thing. I remember yeah, yeah. I only read it as a rumor. I don't know. That was at the yeah. time. But but the point I'm bringing that up too is that you know like if if this if this was Nolan right, he probably would have killed off Alfred in that two film. You know, he probably would have uh, have him die. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, because uh, I was thinking about like, what if Alfred really did die in this movie? Though, you know, like if if it really would have helped, if it would have made the film better. But actually, no, they just kind of cop out. In my opinion, they just kind of cop out near the end, right? But yeah, yeah uh, another necessary character is is Bruce Wayne's girlfriend, and for me, this was always a big disappointment to me, right? Because say what you want about Nicole Kidman as a uh, Chief Meridian. I, yeah. I kind of like, you know, well, I mean, she she does have a great look. Sorry, just, yeah. just be real. Yeah, but I also yeah. thought that it would have it been cool to just kind of break the the Batman trope of every film. He always have to have a new love interest. And let Chase just be in this movie. But it's like, nah, right. we have too much. We have too much big names. So then we get okay. L. McPherson to play Julie right. Madison. Yes, I forget she a was... A name that movie. nobody remembers. Nobody remembers this, this woman. Nobody remembers her name well, in this movie. Well, yes, her name is how much people remember. How much people remember Elle McPherson. Because, yeah, she was like the big... She was like one of the, the tail end of the 90s model. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tail right. end of that, that skinny 90s model. She was like the last one who was like that. That just yeah. hot, hot for being hot, but like, is a skinny white woman. So they, but they're rating she up for some reason. I mean, look, yeah, she's looked I good. Know, right? <laughs> she's looked good, but I mean, God, man, like I, I'm really glad that we we end that era of of type of model. Eh? So to, I we get into the big butts and you know some actual like you know body positive, yo. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent, 110 percent down with yeah. that. Always been some, right. I need them to just have some goddamn fat on your body now. Like curves, yo. Just yeah, see it. Well, just see it. Just well, see well, it. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> but moving on, right? So. Yeah. We, we, we have to talk, just briefly, because we could talk for these about this way, the infamous auction sequence way. Yeah, terrible. If it thought the opening sequence was too much, boy, this is way too much, boy. Oh. And yes, you could talk about the homoeroticism uh, eroticism in this as well, too, but 
it's just how everything is just so copy, so large alive though. Even the music is so goddamn ob- 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 obnoxious, boy. It just it just makes you cringe every time I hear it, right? Um, the 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 people swinging on vines, the the shirtless guys, us people. Gray, sorry, pink gorillas, yeah, and yeah. one of them actually no, is, is, is poison ivy in it, and she just does this kind of seductive dance thing, and they're like, "Why? Why? 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 This this is past sixties camp, you know. We we had a whole different stratosphere with this scene, you know, Trent. It's 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 insane, Trent, you know. And who can forget now? You know, one of the worst jokes in this movie, why? The Batman credit card, boy. Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. It's something that don't make any sense. Here's the thing with it, eh? So it's one of the seasons. Just I've, like, heard, eh? I've heard a response to the Bat credit card thing by saying, well, you could kind of explain it. But here's the problem. It's a credit card. Like, if it was a debit card, you could kind of say, well, you have hidden banks or something like that. Maybe. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you're but right. a credit card is very, like, on the grid, on the grid, in the grid now. Like, you can't get more on the grid than a credit card. Like, sorry, you can't get around that. If it was a debit card or something like that, where you could say, all right, it have hidden accounts or whatever it is, you could kind of make sense of it. Because you had to explain the credit and the reference point now. Again, this is a dumb appeal to very similar to it for the dumb Batman movie here, but... Yeah, it's but, but you're it's right because it's just meant to be a visual bit. It's supposed to laugh, ha, 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 ha. Okay. but uh, because it had the bat logo, it. well, the, nothing about it. Means. The '90s bat logo on it, but like nothing about it works. It's a terrible, terrible joke, right? Um, this one moment, this one one blink in the miss moment that happens, right? This is right after, uh, because of course Mr. Freeze have to come in and you know he drops the line. All right, everyone, chill. And you know, right. starts freezing people, right? Yeah. So there's a moment where Batman, right? Batman, who we saw earlier in the film, take on this laser and help heat up this water now to tore um, Robin right, out, Robin. right? Right, yeah, He yeah. comes and tells the commissioner, Commissioner, you have 11 minutes to thaw these people. Right. And the man literally exit left with him. Yeah, no? Yeah, Every no. time I see that scene, yeah. I am yeah. dying of laughter. Well, you gotta get a laser from, yeah. <laughs> For this moment, so much, right? like he just tell the man who doesn't even have the technology to tour these yeah, motherfuckers. Hey, yeah, that's that'll be 11 like, minutes, you know. Boil some water, or some man, huh? yeah, because I'm sorry, I have to chase bad guys, right? Yeah, the pod, the kettle, yeah, whatever, yeah. And, and, and speaking of that, though, this this whole cheese, the bad guys thing, right? And oh, I forgot to mention to the, the cheese he that follows, though, clearly designed to sell toys. Like, my yeah. god, you have these like weird ass vehicles driving on, you know, and you know, it's it's Joe Schumacher, so you yeah. also have these gigantic male figures, you know, the statues, so you have them like driving down the hand, sorry, the arm, and then they're driving off the hand itself. It's like, yeah. what? Very weird, yeah. What? Like, like someone in Gotham City literally going to create this big thing. Like, like why? 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 But anyway, right? So, the whole Batman and Robin tension that they build makes no sense to me. It starts off with, oh, Batman accusing Robin. Like, oh, but you didn't you didn't catch, uh, yeah. you know, sorry, you were reckless because you didn't catch uh, Mr. Freeze and all that kind of stuff. It's like, bro, you should be grateful I still alive, Jen. You know? Yeah, it's like, no, you need to go get training. 10, 10 hours in the training simulator. It's like, bro, what are you talking about, Jen? So, like, be, be grateful, though. So, during the scene, uh, during the whole chase scene, now, you know, Robin, who's on the bike now, is like, you know, I got him, I got him. It's like, no, you you, 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 you can't get him. No, I got him. And he, he like, disabled the man bike all of a sudden, you know, yeah. and then there's a Batman who ended up capturing Mr. Freeze. But the point is, you don't even give the man a chance to. Now, I understand they try to touch on, you know, um, uh, Bruce Wayne's insecurities. Right. He's, he's clearly insecure about this, having a partner. I get that, right? But dog is like, you acting as if, well, if he doesn't do this one thing, I have to chastise him for it. Like, and, yeah, I don't, I don't blame Robin for being like, no, fuck you, Joe, up to you, you know? But yeah, that, that whole tension between the two just never worked for me. And the just problem before I get to your thoughts, right? And it gets yeah. even worse now when Poison Ivy comes in the middle of all of it, right? But I'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, your, your thoughts on the, the yeah, Batman so, Robin tension. Yeah, they're playing, so they're playing on the whole Nightwing thing and why he became Nightwing in the first place. Again, the animated series did this so much better. Um, but the one he promises that he don't really know Robin all that long. Like, remember Robin was a big hardback man when he became Robin. Like, that is the whole Yeah, job. yeah, yeah. That I, I, you know, but in, uh, judging by the, the, the film's, uh, you know, timeline is like a year after, yeah. roughly a year after the events of Forever, right? Yeah. But it is the, is the dumbness of it of, of like, why is he supposed to be so rebellious? Like, dude, you're a big hardback man. Move out, dude. Like, 
He was that is true, because yeah, was like, this is quite obnoxious to be yeah, honest. With. Yeah, like nothing about it makes sense or work now. Because again, when Robin as a little as a little kid, Robin was like what I don't know, twelve or whatever. It is when he first became Robin in the comics. Um, but in this, it don't make no sense. So it's like I, I don't know what's the argument exactly. Like yeah. Sorry, what, what going on here? Anyway, I, I don't know, right? But yeah, but but now 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 we gotta get to 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 to, to um, the love interest now. You know, be between these two heroes, right? Poison Ivy, right? Right. And one thing, even back then to this day, that still angers me is that all right. I don't know a lot about Poison Ivy, right? but I love the fact that she uses her vines, that she uses those as weapons. She have the Venus tra- uh, fly traps right. and yeah. stuff, right? But this case, she weapon of choice at the moment is this pheromone dust. That's no, all she just, a, just no, that's walk a around. Big, no, that's a big, pho- no, that's dust, a big you know? Yeah, no, that's a big power. That that uh, the pheromone is a big, big part of the her power set. No, like she could use it on people. One of the more famous moments is her use it on Superman. Like it's stuff. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, talk about yeah. yeah. So, but it's, but it's, I'll, I'll explain what be. But yeah, go on. Yeah, no, like I don't have a problem with that. Like that makes some sense. Again, it is dumb campiness and sex appeal crap. But like, yeah. Yeah, but what 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 mean though in, in, in terms of it not making any sense, right? So we get a fight between Batman and Bean, right? And by the way, this is way less intense than what we got in Dark Knight Rises. Huh? Again, yeah. see what you want about Dark Knight Rises and redeem the character of Bean, right? Like you remember that scene. You yeah. remember that scene, right? You remember the lack, there was no music. You remember yeah. the punch, and you remember the, you remember the water. You remember you remember the sewer. You remember all that shit, right? right yeah, yeah. But yeah, boy, this this fight is just so bad. Um, you know, just this is really hilarious moment where you see Bean punch his head out of this fake um, you know, um, snowman and fall fall onto some boxes. It's terrible. It's terrible, right? But while all this is going on, Trent, you just see it, uh, <laughs> poison ivy just just blowing just blowing this pheromone dust on on, yep. on, uh, on 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 Robin, and that's it. I just talking yep. all this sexual stuff, and that's it. Just <laughs> talk some stuff, <laughs> talk some yeah, stuff, yeah. and that that that's all she's doing. While while Batman's literally getting his ass whipped, right? That's why I don't blame it for getting pissed off though. Is like because well, she was about to kiss him because as as revealed earlier on, yeah, the right. no poison kiss, right? Poison lips, right? right? So, you know, it's like you know, she, uh, and, you know, Batman rightfully say, yeah, you know, her lips probably, probably was poison because we learned, because he learned earlier on that you know people that uh, certain people died, you know, from from getting poisoned orally, right? Yeah. So he's like, uh, oh, well, you're just it's... jealous because you know he loves, me. sorry, she loves me, and not right, you. Yeah. You know, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's right. just such a bad look, boy. It just, it's just taking these iconic characters, trying to reduce them to like teens from some sort of like sex comedy from the eighties. But yeah. it looks bad. Even yeah. worse is the moment where Batman pushes uh, Robin into this vata paint of green paint, get it green with envy. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, subtlety, right? It's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And then he comes out and he's like, "I'm going solo." Right. It's, it's, it's bad. I, I hate the scene, right? But I can't help but laugh at it at the same time too, right? Again, so, if they if they made the attempt to have him become Nightwing in the movie, that would make some sense. But they didn't do that, so it's like, all right, well, moving on. Because that would have been interesting. Like, okay, he becomes Nightwing, and then Batgirl joins. So yeah, but no, he stays as Robin because he didn't want to make an exit. So exactly, like, and, and right. title of the movie, right? Robin, right? So yeah. you know. But anyway, right? So so we 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 forget about Barbara now. So. Is the yeah. moment now where, where, where Barbara learns about, you know, who Bruce and, and, and Dick really are. Right. Uh, oh, gosh. Like, understand, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's time we work in it, right? So. Who, who make us for her? That's, that's all. I'll get to that, yeah. right? So, so yeah. Alfred, this is this subplot, right? Which, unfortunately, they never follow through it, right? Where Alfred basically looking for his uh, his long-lost brother, uh, Wilbert, uh, Wil- Wilfred, sorry, right? So he he compiled all this information, right? He put it on a CD, right? And he gives it to Barbara and tells her basically to to help to basically look for him, right? Because he's about to die, right? So you say, like, look for my brother, right? She instead goes now, she she accesses this computer, right? Not 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 the bad computer. We'll get to that in a bit, right? So you just access this random computer they have in the, in the mansion, right? And then she see like all this imagery. She see the the, the well, remember the marketed for this movie, you know, the 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 bat the Batman the, the Robin logo in stupid pose onto each other, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> is how the images, right? Like reflecting on her face, right? like mm-hmm. it's a computer, bro. Com- computers don't do that shit. It's not it's not a it's not it's not a video projector, bro. Like it's not a projector, sorry. Like <laughs> 
Again, what, what bullshit like what? that? Bullshit like that? I do care about. Like I really. Well, I want make it even worse. By the way, is the goddamn music because he played yeah. that. Like they play that shit. I'm like, yeah. God, why they making this thing out to be so revolution, like so re- re- uh, re- uh, revelatory? Duh. Yeah, like, oh God, it looks terrible. But yeah, I go ahead. You know, I, 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 again, stuff like this, I have no memory of or care about. Like, eh, whatever. Moving on. Uh, it, right. It, so, it, it, yeah. <laughs> so to answer the question about the costume, right? So afterwards, right? She, she, she goes to the bad computer, right? And I brought this up in in my Batman Forever review, right? Uh, <laughs> so Alfred has his EI consciousness, whatever. Sorry, consciousness translated as an AI on the back computer, right? right. So as, yeah, yeah, as she exactly. steps into the room, you see back come computer, on this back head, room, right? yeah, this back head room shit and he does this right. intruder alert intruder alert intruder alert right, intruder right. alert intruder alert which always makes you laugh right and then afterwards like oh Barbara going I knew sorry sorry oops Barbara Barbara I always knew you'd come right you right. always knew you'd come right and I, uh, you know, basically, he tells her, uh, uh, well, sorry, he always knew that she'd want to help Batman Robin. The AI, right, that she'd always seen for the first time, always knew that she would help Batman Robin, right? No comment. And he even created a suit for her. Right. No comment. No comment. How he make the suit? I don't even know. No comment. <laughs> and that's where you get the little montage with her dressing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They, you know, they, 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 you know, they show the butt because, you know, we can't, it can't just be badass, you know, sorry, you know, because there's guys in the crowd. But even that, all just do evil work for me. It's just like, why, yeah. why are we doing this? She doesn't do the hop, don't get me wrong, but it's like, right. why, why are we doing this? Why? Yeah. But yeah, that whole AI doing that she noticed and yeah. building a suit thing. Oh my God. And like the show itself with all the over the topness it going for, right? Couldn't even be bothered to say how, how, how it do it. How? Right. It don't, oh. it, don't, it, don't, it don't really matter. No one cares. Move it That's on. the thing. And you could say that, right? Well, it's a 90s movie. Nobody cares. We Movie almost done. But whatever, right? But moving on, right? So back to Bane, though. Bane has one of the best lines in this movie because this is where they at this, uh, well, basically this observatory because uh, Bruce built this gigantic, uh, right, you so know, um, telescope. And I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get to the plot in a bit, right? So, so be, oh, sorry. So basically, basically, they want to use as a D, as in, you know, um, uh, Mr. Freeze and, and, and Poison Life, right? Listen to this, Ricardo, right? I'll remind you, right? So basically, yeah. he still wants to freeze Gotham, right? But because she's all about, you know, eco and all that kind of stuff, you know, pro eco and all that kind of stuff, right? She basically wants to to to, re, to, to, to populate the world now with these sort of small sort of Venus flytrap as kind of plants, right. right? But that's right after now, uh, Freeze freezes basically Gotham and the world, right? That's what they're really going for, right? But um, it, it, it plants needs sunlight to... to yeah, that, I don't, to, that was so. it. Can he, he, he keep hopping on this eternal winter thing, though? And exactly. it gets even worse, though, because he taught, he assumes, though, because um, boys, I really like him, though, that Batman was the one who pulled the plug on the whole right, crowd. Right, right, right. Yeah, I forget she, I forget she killed the wife. Yeah. Center, you know? I forget she's he like, killed the wife. you know, eternal winter, rah, and all that kind of stuff. Does. So it's like, how, how the hell are these plants going to grow? Yeah, no right. comment, right? Moving on, right? Moving on. So in the, in the observatory, though, you know, as a as a field thief now, um, you know, being planting all these bombs, right? And I will lie, the first time I saw this, I was baffled there. But after but the more I see this this scene, I always laugh the bomb. 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 <laughs> bomb. It is so funny. It is so funny. You, you, you can't make this shit up, Dread, right? And you know his these ice buds again. Tonight, hell freezes over. Yeah. There's always one line where he says, "Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming." Yeah. Because it was in the trailers, I didn't quest it, but it's one of those lines that kind of so cool back then. But when you listen now, it just makes no sense. Like, like what? Okay. So now we get one of my all-time favorite scenes in the movie, right? This is Robin's confrontation with Ivy, right? So back then, I didn't pick up on the twist for the first time, right? And even when the twist happens, I was just like, oh, that's it, right? But still, this is one of 
funniest things I've ever seen in a movie, Dredd. So, but when you watch it now, Dredd, it's how they telegraph it too, because with the lip gloss on, 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 on Chris O'Donnell's lips, Dredd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right after where, okay, um, Ivy kisses them and the audience like, oh no, you know, he's going to get poisoned, Dredd. And it's like he pulls the, the, the rubber lips now and it's the lie that he says, Dredd. No, sorry, before I forget, is is what she says though. She says Freeze has taken the new telescope and turned it into a giant freezing gun. He's about to turn Gotham into an ice cube. Like the, the dialogue Jen, again, they just give poor Uber Tuba these bad lines. But anyway, so after the kiss now, Robin pulls off the <laughs> the rubber lips and he says Rubber lips are immune to your charms. Best slide ever. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Is, right, so afterwards, though, Batman shows up, they have the fight, and this is this is where Ivy finally uses her vines, right? This is where they finally use the vines, right? And conveniently, conveniently, yeah, Batgirl shows up, yeah. and the first line that she drops is... You're about to become compost. Yeah, no comment. Yeah, she do a little flip, she do a little kick, she she she, she put Ivy on she back, and then... And they had have a chick fight. Yeah, they had have a chick fight, right? And then... Again, this is this is pre me too, pre woke this right, but the movie just had to shoehorn this kind of um uh, this, it's 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 feminist. I get it, but it's just so on the nose and it just sounds so bad, badly written and badly delivered. You know, so she's talking about using feminine wiles to get what you want, trading on your looks. Read a book, sister. That passive aggressive number went out long ago. Chicks like you give women a bad name. Yeah, is it late like, night? I get it. It's yeah, is like, it late oh, night? Late oh. night. You just do that all the time. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, Ugh. yeah. Right? Uh, we then get one of my favorite ice pods. Let's kick some ice. Again, makes no sense, but it just sounds so funny, right? So we wrap it up, right? So later on, now, uh, our heroes show up, and you know, uh, <laughs> is, is, you know, the swinging with the batter rugs and the kicking off of, for platforms, the fighting, and the here, here, there, right? So. This is where we get one of the what I call the dumbest, smartest dialogue I ever hear in a movie trend. So they now reach it by the telescope, right? They now figure out what to do because this time Gotham is frozen, right? So it's like eight more minutes in a city full of Gotham lights or ice cubes forever. Sunlight could reverse the freezing process. Well, sunrise in for five hours. Here. But it's morning in the Congo. Yeah. It's morning in the Congo. Yes. Yeah, and it's that whole kind of like I forget what you call it. Basically, it's you know the the Adam West stuff where this yeah. co- where this coming up with all these scientific yeah, notions. It's weird moon logic, yeah. Moon logic, but they, they yeah. try to do a thing with it. But it's like okay, we need to redirect sunlight from here and satellites. And they, and they're like, what, what, what? You know, <laughs> and you know, we really sunlight from below the equator. Like, bro, yeah. like wrap yeah. up the movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they had that morning at the Congo. Eh? They yeah. had me at morning in the Congo. That is hilarious, right? But yeah, that whole sequence, that whole final sequence, just like the auction scene and the opening scene, though, is just Nonsense. too much. It's overkill. The swinging, the back and forth, the yeah. fight that just go nowhere, you know, the the, the, the bad the bad VFX where you see Robin and Matthew swinging, uh, being, to the back to, being to the back to normal. All this wow that he does yeah. is hilarious, though. <laughs> Um, even like when 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 Batman gets the upper hand, where he puts this heat device thing on Freeze, and then he dropped the light. Hey Freeze, the heat is on. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, just to wrap things up, now Batman persuades Freeze to help him out. You know. Yeah, and, that's right. And, yeah. yeah, the same right because yeah, yeah, the first stage of the, the the disease or something like that, or earlier stage of the disease. Yeah, and I, and I actually do feel the heart of the film because it's literally Batman saying, please help me. He said it, right? Yeah. And I actually do like when, when Freeze takes the two little vials and says, Take two of these and call me in the morning. That is actually like the best line he ever delivered that whole yeah. movie. It is so clever. It, it, it kind of transcends all the ice puns and just bullshit dialogue that he was saying. It's a great line, right? Um, of course, you know, they, they, they use it and, you know, um, our friends back to normal. Like, you know, they, they, they couldn't let the man die and really make the scene really impactful, the movie more impactful. But like, nah, it's, it's a summer blockbuster movie and kids here, so we had to make our friend live. Yay! Um, Freeze and Ivy are... Uh, uh, our cell meets now in, in, in Arkham Asylum. So you know he's gonna get back at Ivy. You know what's gonna happen there. Um and then of course we get the the, the final shot with the spotlight and what that is. See all three heroes running, right? right. And now, uh, for some people 
And then um, we call him um, wobbling head again. Yeah, the wobbling head again, right? Um, I I mean, it's a great shot as as a whole, right? I mean, it looked way better in the, in, the, in Batman Fever. Don't get me wrong, eh? but just seeing the three of them and the wobbly head thing just doesn't work for me. It just peels in comparison, even though it just looks very similar, right, to, to the last shot, right? And yeah, that's that's the end of the film, right? So it it in, in, in closing, right? Um. This is still a terrible movie. Don't, don't get me wrong, right? This is a pure example. Like, this is going to go down the history of, you know, just cinematic excess, right? Just as soon as you see it, yes, let's just pump all this money into this movie. And literally, I, I, I think this is like one of the, few, the first few times where, uh, I can remember, I was a kid back then, so I didn't really know too much about box office, you know, receipts and the returns right. and all that kind of stuff, right? It's only afterwards I learned about that, right? But even back then, I knew something was terribly wrong with this, right? And then after the fact learning how big of a flop this was, right? Yeah. That, that, like, that to me was like, oh, like, just because it's a summer blockbuster movie and it features characters that you know from comics doesn't well, mean that the, that the movie's going to be great. It didn't do completely disastrous, but like what the what the studio wanted in terms of the numbers this was a, a big letdown. Yeah, it, it was, it was, right? Yeah, so from I would say from that point and from um I would say uh Mortal Kombat Annihilation, that's when I really started to pick up on the fact. I remember, you know, I was I was becoming I was slowly becoming, you know, uh tuned to, to film criticism. Like, wow, they could really be like trash films or you know, trash films with big budgets. This yeah. was like one of the first few that I ever saw that, right? Yeah. Uh Mortal Kombat and the Annihilation by my in uh in my comparison is trash film but with a with a much smaller budget right well, yeah and yeah you know and i would see this over the years with movies like see wild wild west that's like another pure example of right yeah we pump yeah. a lot of money but yeah it's a terrible movie right yeah so yeah uh but you still look at it now i could still kind of watch it. it it's really another film you can watch by yourself because you'll be cringing and grooming and custom up the place but it's really one of those films now that you can watch it film with friends sorry have a few beers and just be cracking up at every every wrong decision made on screen you know what I mean yeah. into the dialogue into the direction and even with with even even other Joel Schumacher's hundred there's still some shots that just look flat out terrible in my opinion right but at the end of the day though if we didn't get this we would not have had, you know, um, the Nolan Trilogy. We would not have had Batman Begins. We would have had a Batman uh, Unchained. And heaven knows how garish and over the top that shit would have been, you know? So, yeah, tag, 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 tag the, you know, the the, the, the the comic book gods. And by the way, I forgot to mention, too, this was the last film that Bob Kane saw before he passed away, Trent. Wow, <laughs> Dara Butoglu. Yeah, this this was. I mean, bad, you know, in retrospect, in retrospect, you know, it was really Bill Finger, but whatever. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, in, in retrospect, you know, this is the one tag. This is the one thing you could tag this movie for. If it wasn't for this, we would get Batman Begins, right? And the rest is history. So yeah, rated wise, well, that, that a yeah. yeah, yeah. So rated wise, this gets a one and a half out of five for me. Yeah. This shit is very, very, very cree. Uh, watching this, I was just cracking up, but yeah, I will lie to you. Oftentimes, I was just bored. I was just tired. I was just like, all right, just wrap this shit up, please. You know what I mean? So again, this is one of those movies you just, ha- you just kind of have to watch with friends, you know what I mean? With, with, with bears and all that kind of stuff, right? But lastly, in terms of legacy, though, uh, while, yes, this will go down as far as one of the worst movies ever made, this will go down as one of the, you know, just, just like a hidden book disaster as far as, you know, some of, just some of blockbusters, sorry, as far as just Hollywood movies go. Uh, I do hope that this will just be just a warning, you know, for future filmmakers. Just to be careful, you know, that, that, like, yes, have, let your imagination fly and whatnot. If you get the opportunity to make a big budget film, do that. But no, 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 I know it's going to be hard, right? But just be careful of studio interference, especially when you come like, yo, we have to sell toys, you know. So all the characters, all the costumes and all the, the, the vehicles is all about selling toys, right? You know I mean, it's, it's just that pure example of studio interference and a yeah. director's vision just clashing and just the execution and what we get is just, right. it's just, it's just, it's just a dumpster fire, right? So I just yeah. hope that in the, in the years to come, you know, filmmakers will kind of look at this film and be like, all right, I don't want to do that ever. So yeah, Ricardo, final thoughts rated. Yeah, I don't know if I get so from my old age, but like I don't hate this as much as other people seem to. Um, it's one of those movies that just, like to me, it was very clear in terms of what he wanted to go for, and it it, it works for varying varying results. Um, but yeah, it was meant to be an Adam West movie. That's how I look at it. It's, it's an Adam West movie. It clearly it clearly skewed young. You know, yeah, okay, it, it cringy because you know Adam West shit was cringy. But that's how I, I just kind of feel about this. It's like I don't hate this as much as 
as I remember hating it. And again, most of it just seems to be two things. One, the kind of nascent homophobia about it, like, you know, back nipples and people don't shut up about that. And then the fact that, uh, you know, he didn't really give a shit about making Batman too serious or dark. Like, that is about it. We don't. Like, yeah, uh, that, that, that's true. Yeah, you have to give Jewel credit for that too. Eh? Yeah. yeah he, didn't kind of, he didn't give a shit about that. Clearly, he didn't. So that's why it didn't, it didn't, it didn't bother me anyway, near as much as other people, um, you know, seem to be bothered by it. Like, oh, this is such, such a massive disaster. It was just, to me, more reactionary. They hate and they, they, you know, they hate and they, 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 the whole stuff just so, you know, silly now. Like, you know, Batman, you gotta take Batman serious. But it's like, it's fucking Batman. Nobody cares. Like, I don't know. It was a portent. I, I, I know, I know. But, you know, yeah. is is the oh, I you know, is either like the, the Adam West version or the Tim Burton one, right? You know, it, it's that. It's, it's that, yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I, I just do hate this as much as other people do. It is very bad. It's terrible. I'm denying none of that. But, like, I can't get into the hate fit in the same way. Anyway, that's about how I feel about that. Um, it's, it is something that came out. It was, it was a kind of portent for internet culture and reactionary fandoms and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if you look at it, look back at it. It's interesting in that sense. But as a film itself, it's just like, oh, just, just kind of bad. And they should have made money, more, more money on this. It's moving on. Uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it. All right. Um, and, yeah, you, I mean, you don't have to read it. It's, it's fine. Oh, yeah, right? written. Written, I don't know. Uh, where's it? Is? I'll probably like about a, a five or five out of ten, four out of ten, if anything. Uh, right, yeah, it, that's 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 reasonable. Yeah, it's it, it bad. It's bad. Pretty yeah, bad. It, it is. It is. Um, but I don't, I don't like I, the hate is, is the, the overblown, you know, performative hate. I don't understand. About yeah, it. like that's um, me about it. Like, whatever. Yeah, I understand. And just, just in closing, last, last words, right? Um, that, that is true, though. And it's one of those things, like, I don't want to spend a lot of time exploring it, though. But yeah, it's just that, 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 lo- that, that loading that this movie receives, though. I, I think it's in, in, in Porties. Um, like, I actually own the box set, like, you know, the first four Batman movies um, on, on Blu ray. I actually don't mind owning, you know, Batman Robin and tell people that I actually own it on Blu-ray. I don't mind yeah, seeing yeah. that at all, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, you know, like I said, it's one of those movies you can, you can kind of watch, laugh at, have fun with, right? Right. But exactly. it's not a show like, you know, it should, it's like the worst thing ever in the history of ever. And I, I know there's a lot of people that would like to put it in that category, but nah, Listen, like, there's, I, there's more, there's, there's, there's worse movies I, out I there. Hate, I, hate Batman, there. I hate Batman with Superman more than this. Like, no, no, BVS is worse though. It's yeah. worse because I feel yeah. like it, 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 it's not even like designed for you to have fun. It's just so yeah. dreary and just yeah. dull and ugly, man. It's just yeah. like, like, dog, have a little fun, bro. Yeah, like, chill out. Know, all this, yeah. Yeah, like, exactly. Whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's my last kind of point on it. It's like, it, it's one of those things years later. Again, if I was if I was on the internet back back when this came out, I'd be like, wait, but it's the worst thing ever. But it's, it's more, it really comes across more like this kind of weird tribal performative. Out, you know, we need to outdo each other in terms of how bad something is, so they get a, they, they, they have a target. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the way it was. You, you get a single target, and you, you, you leverage yourself onto it. That's all. Yeah, ha ha ha! Let's let's laugh at at right. at, at the Batman it's, Robin movie. Ha ha ha! I, it's funny. I, 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 I engage in a lot of that myself, to be honest. Like it have it have plenty of movies. I'll be like, yeah, this is some goofiness, and you, you make fun of it in retrospect. But like, just a perpetual hate, constant, 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 forever. Like really. You gotta stop at some point, and it just come yeah. across as, at a certain point. It just come across as mean spirited and weird. Uh, as a agreed, film, agreed. Yeah, as a film, yeah, yeah it bad. It don't work. You know, I don't know. You know, it is bad. Like I'm not like saying it, it's it's this masterpiece and it's some hit masterpiece or anything like that. No, no, but, like, no. It's like no. um, uh, like the, the like okay, a movie I'm like that with is uh the Watch House the Speed Racer. Like I know a lot of people don't like that movie, and I I think it's great, not only great but kind of a masterpiece. Um, right. it's not like that for for what it is. For what, what it is, is. right? It, what it's trying to do and say, uh, but this was just like, yeah, it don't work, and I get what you're trying to go for, and you probably should have had a little more creative freedom in it, but like, I, yeah, it don't work. Like, I move it on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, 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 I do hope that years from now, even with you know, this movie turning 25, and you know, with the unfortunate passing of, of Joel Schumacher, that you know, more people will look at it and be like, you know what, we shouldn't have been that hard on it, you know, because I know he felt it, I know he really, really, really felt it. I mean, the 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 cast and crew moved on, but I know he really felt it because it's like his vision. But I do hope that you know, in the in the in the future, actually, you know, more people kind of warm up to it a little bit and just treat it as the the, the campy, silly movie you can watch with friends and alcohol and just treat it like that instead of like the worst thing to happen in the history of mankind. Like no, like just give it a blind. You know what I mean? That's that's all. Just see. <laughs>